All right, so we're going to be looking at random variables here um, for this unit. This is kind of an offshoot of our last unit, probability. Um, so as you can see, those daily videos are still in the four point in unit four according to um, the online curricula, but we split it up into two different because we didn't want that to be such a hefty unit. So what is a random variable? Well, a random variable is a variable whose value is a numerical outcome of a random phenomenon. And we're almost always going to be denoting random variables. Actually, we are going to be denoting random variables with capital letters. If I can spell it. There we go. All right. So let's take, for example, um, sorry, and then the unknown value of a random variable is going to be denoted with a small letter. So x sub i is one of the values of a larger x. So let's take a look at our first kind of probability distribution, and that's going to be the number of boys that we could have in three pregnancies. So x will be the number of boys within three pregnancies. We could have zero, we could have one, we could have two, or we could have three. And our distribution, or our model, would look like this. Okay, The probability of having no boys, well that would be all girls in three pregnancies, be uh, one half, one half, and one half. 1.25. Probability of having one boy in three pregnancies would be 0.375. For two boys, that would be 0.375. And for three boys, that would be 1/8. Okay. So this probability model, and I kind of said it uh, accidentally ahead of time, um, of some random variable is called a probability distribution. So just like our um, quantitative distributions where we would use histograms, things like that, um, box plots, things like that. This is the same sort of idea, but this is going to be a probability distribution. Where we don't have frequency here, but we have probability. Now there are two different types of random variables we could be looking at. First is a discrete random variable. Now, what a discrete random variable would be, well, take a moment and think about it. So we have our first example one, example two, example three. Read it over for discrete random variables. Do the same thing for continuous random variables. Think about what the difference between the two are. All right, so a discrete random variable going to be a specific set of numbers. Right? What that means is oftentimes we will denote a specific set of numbers. We will denote that as whole numbers, but even half, half numbers, like um, shoe size might be an example. that we had up here, number of boys, that would be discrete, right? There are a specific number of numbers. Whereas continuous, on the other hand, would be any number within a range. Oftentimes when we're measuring something, Oftentimes, if we're measuring something, that would be continuous. So height. And oftentimes, we will describe height as like 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", and turn it into discrete. But technically, height, I mean, has decimals, right? And has decimals that go on forever, right? You could, even if you're 6'1", you're probably 6'1 point something, okay? 0.235 or something like that, all right? So height would be something that's continuous. Um, you know, time to complete a 100 meter dash. Uh, we can only measure to maybe the hundredths uh, of a second, 
but technically you could you could do it on a thousands, hundreds of thousands, um, you know, millionths of a second, right? We could measure that um, even more exactly if we had the tools. So that's discrete versus random. Now for a discrete random variable, let's think about how we might create a sample space for this. So we're going to flip a coin three times and we want to map out uh, what happens when we flip that coin three times. Well, can I create a sample space for this? Yeah, absolutely I can. Right, for my first flip I could get a heads or a tails. If I got a heads on my first flip, I could get a heads or a tails on my second flip. Same thing if I got a tails on my first flip. So this is the first, second, and then if I get a heads then a heads, I could get a heads or a tails. I could get a heads or a tails. I could get a heads or a tails. And I could get a heads or a tails. You all know that I like my tree tree diagram better. And again, this is going to be the third flip. Okay. You could also list it out if you want to. Okay. To find the probability of each, well, you just think about um, how many successes or how many fall within each of these categories and um, over how many total there are. So what's the probability that I get zero heads? Well, there's one scenario where that happens out of eight total possibilities. To get one head, well, I could get heads, tails, tails, right? I could get tails, tails, heads, or I could get tails, heads, tails. So there's a three and eight possibility of that. Okay. How could I get two? Well, I could get heads, heads, tails. I could get heads, tails, heads. I could get tails, heads, heads. Okay. So three scenarios where that happens. And what's the probability that I get all three heads? Well, there's only one scenario. Yeah. When I add all of these up, I will get one or 100 percent. Right. So there's my probability model. Remember, probability models must add up to 100 percent. Okay. Now let's take a look at a continuous random variable. Right. Suppose we want to choose a number at random between zero and one, allowing any number between zero and one to be the outcome. Well, let's try to create a sample space for this scenario. So what are my possibilities for the numbers that I could choose? Well, I could choose 0.1. I could choose 0.01. I could choose 0.001. I could choose 0.00001. And hopefully you see where this is going. There are an infinite number of possibilities. So we can't make a sample space for this. Right? Can't be made when we're talking about continuous uh, random variables. So why is it practically impossible to create a sample space um, for this scenario? Well, there's an infinite number of possibilities. There's an infinite number of outcomes. So that's how we would create a probability model. Now what about creating a graphical representation? Well, we can do both. So for discrete random variables, oftentimes we'll use a histogram. So probability of a 0 equals 1 8 or 1 1.25, 3.75 for 1, 3.75 for 2. And 1 .3. So that's what my histogram would look like. For continuous random variables, since we can't make a histogram because there's an infinite number of possibilities um, and we'd have to write an infinite number of numbers here, what we will do is display the random variable, continuous random variable using a density curve. So the total probability, if we remember the definition of a density curve, it has to represent um, the correct probability um, for all of these cannot go behind below the x-axis and um, the area total area has to be one. So the probability for each of those individually is going to be equal, right? If I'm choosing a number at random, one number doesn't happen to be more likely than any other. So my density curve would look uniform. All of 
this makes sense so far. Now, taking a look at this, at our histogram, we can find these probabilities. The probability that x is less than 1, when we're talking about density curve, would just be, okay, what well, many values should I have that, le that are less than 1? Just one. So that would just be the probability that x equals 0, which is 0 0.125. That I'm discrete. Well, I know that because it's discrete. Okay, and that's just going to be 0 0.125. What about the probability that x is greater than 2? Well, what values are greater than 2? Just 3. That's going to be the probability that x is equal to 3, which is also 0 0.125. Come on, Mr. White said you're better than that. What about the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2? Well, how many values do I have that are greater than or equal to 2? I have 2 and I have 2. So that would be the probability that x equals 3 plus the probability that x equals 2, which is 50%. And the probability that x is between 0 and 2, but including 0 and not including 2, well, that's just 0 and 1. So that would be the probability that x equals 0 plus the probability that x equals 1, which would also be 50%. Now, for our density curve, we can just show it and think it through. The probability that x is less than 0.4, which is plot 0.4. and find the area of this rectangle, which is just length times width, or length times height, 0.4 times 1, which is 0 0.4. The probability that x is equal to 0.5, well, again, we think about this. How many values are exactly at 0.5? Well, 1. What would the denominator be? Well, there's an infinite number of outcomes, so this can't be found. Probability that I'm less than 0.12. Well, again, we can plot our 0.12 and shade if we want to. We'll find that that's 0 0.12. The probability that I'm less than or equal to. Well, if equal to is, can't be found because it's an infinitely small number, then this is just going to be the same as the probability that x is less than 0 0.12 or 0 0.12. And the probability that we're between 0.89 and 0.92, well, that's just going to be the probability. Well, all we have to do there is figure out our length times our width, right? I was going to do it in a more complicated way, but I don't need to do that. And I know these aren't exactly right. But looking for this region right here, we just subtract those two to get the length here, and then the height is 1. So that will be 0 0.0. Now to summarize what we kind of just talked about right there. Okay. Since the possible outcomes for discrete uh, random variable is finite, the sample space for uh, variable x can be organized into a histogram or a list or a tree diagram. Every value or the probability that any value exists must be between 0 and 1, right? There can't be less than a 0% chance of something occurring or more than a 100% chance of something occurring. And the sum of all of these probabilities, because it's a probability model, must be equal to 1. Okay? And then again, oftentimes, since we can, we will organize that into a histogram. Right? Now, 
because continuous has an infinite number of possibilities. We cannot organize it into a list or tree diagram. Can't make that sample space. Right? And we'll use a density curve to represent that. Now this unit, we are going to be talking specifically about discrete random variables. Okay. So we're going to be talking about in our note in the rest of our notes today about a probability model for discrete random variables and how to calculate and interpret uh, the mean or another word for that is the expected value uh, and the standard deviation of a random variable. So taking a look at Miss Hammond's class um, we'll pretend it says Mr. Whitesell in fact on yours I think it will say Mr. Whitesell I'll make sure to change that over. Um, we see uh, a student's grades. Okay? So this was back when we were do doing the point system last year. I'm um, not doing that anymore. But we have our possible points and our points earned. Okay. And let's say that we have mastery set at 70%, knowledge and skills set at 20%, practice set at 10%. Um, this is values that we used to use. We've modified them slightly for you this year. But what we're going to do is determine what is this student's score by figuring out what was their score in mastery, knowledge and skills, and practice. And think about how to do that. Some of you might already know how to do this, which means you already know how to calculate discrete random variables and the mean for discrete random variables without even knowing. So the way we're going to do this is take all of the points earned in mastery, so our 0 plus our 76 plus our 82, which is 158, and divide it by the total possible points in mastery. So 10 plus 100 plus 100, giving us the value of um, giving us a value of 75 percent. Right, give me one moment. that had a student interrupting. Okay. For knowledge and skills, again we're going to take our total points earned, which is 47, and divide that by the possible points, which is 49. Gives us a value of 96% for that category. And for practice, we'll take our points earned for our practice, which is 135 and divide that by the possible points, which is 140, giving us about a 96%. Now, how are we going to calculate the student score given these weights? Well, as you may already know, all we're going to do is take their percentage in each of these categories and multiply it by the weight. So if a student in this year, in not this year, but in the year that we calculated this, or did a 70% mastery, which we don't do anymore, um, found that, and I realized that that was a 0.1, not a 0.2, um, got a 96 in knowledge and skills, got a 96 in practice, and got a 75 on their tests, then they would have an 81.3%. Aren't you happy that we don't? do 70% on tests anymore. Okay. So how would we how did we do this? Well we take the value, the percent in each category. Multiply by the weight.
and then add all values together. That is the exact same way that we calculate the mean and distribution of random variables. Okay. So below are the actual distribution of scores on last year's AP statistics games. This isn't actually last year's. This is um, a few years ago. I didn't really take into account last year's. Kids did okay last year, but not as well as they had in the past. Right. So I want to know what is the mean on last year's AP exam. And again, this isn't necessarily for my class. This is for all classes. Right. So. To find our expected value or to find the mean, we're just going to take the score times its percent as a decimal and add all of them up. And if you ask me when I get back, I will actually tell you the distribution of scores for all students last year. So you can kind of get an idea and we can calculate the mean. And when we calculate all of this out, we find that the average score is a 2.858. Now with another word for this mean, it makes sense as a mean in uh, if we're talking about test scores, but another word for this is actually the expected value. And the formula for that Sometimes we will use expected value or we will use mu sub x. Okay. Again, the sub x shows that we're talking about a discrete random variable. And our formula for that is actually going to be the sum. Right? We added a bunch of things together up here, so we know we're taking a sum. Well, what did we add together? We took each of the data values value and multiplied it by the probability, by its probability. So we took the value and multiply it by its probability. Okay. Now what if we wanted to know how much variation there are between the scores? Well the variance of some discrete random variables well, for that, similar to what we did before, we're going to take each of the data values and we're going to subtract it by the mean, square that value. But instead of dividing by the number of numbers, we're going to be multiplying by the probability that it occurs. Okay? And then summing up all of those values. And that would be the variance. To find the standard deviation, we would take that formula and take the square root of it. Standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. These formulas are actually given to you on our AP formula sheet. create a probability distribution of the AP exam scores and take a look at what it looks like. Hey, look, it's our socks. Or in this case, sucks. i got to change that back. Um, one year we decided to treat this as socks, but we changed this to an L. Unusual occurrences also work, so. Right. So we have our AP exam score of 1, 2, three, four, four, five, and we'll go up. The highest is going to be about 0.27, so let's go up by 3%. Okay. So our distribution probability of ones is what? About 
that we have a discrete random variable, right? So we can make a histogram. We don't have to make a density curve for this one. Okay. For two, it was about, what was it, 16%? A little higher than 15%. The threes were a little higher than 24%. For fours, it's a little higher than 21%. And for five is about thirteen percent. A little bit higher than thirteen percent. So there's our distribution. So what would the shape of this distribution be? Well, I would call that bimodal. I don't know if we have enough to say that if it's skewed right or skewed left. Definitely not symmetric. So let's call it bimodal. Outliers doesn't look like it. Okay. The center, well, we calculated that up here, right? So 2.858, which is our mean of x. And then you're like, Mr. White, so you're not including context. I'm not going to include context. You can when we do this, if we ever um, do this. And then for our spread, uh, we can calculate our standard deviation I've done it for you. It's just going to be 1.37. And on the notes uh, key, you will see uh, how uh, I calculated that. I show my work there. Right. So for discrete random variables, first thing is our mean. You can denote it either with E of X, expected value, or as mu sub X. Formula for that on the formula sheet is every value times its probability and then sum all of those up. And how would we actually interpret this? What does this 2.858 actually mean? Well, it means that we would expect. value of whatever on average after many, many trials. Okay. So that doesn't mean the first time I do something, and especially as we start getting into things that are have a higher probability. So if I chose a person at random, I wouldn't expect their score to be exactly 2.858. That would be impossible even. But if I took many, many, many trials, on average, their score should be between a two and a three, more like a little bit more likely to be a three. Right? For the variance, well, the notation we would use is variance of x or x squared of x. This is the notation they use on your formula sheet. This is the nota another notation you can use. Again, we do be summing up each of those values minus the mean squared times the probability that it occurs. Okay. And what does that mean? Well, variance would be expect. value of whatever to be the average distance squared from the mean. 
or of each data value from the name. And our standard deviation is going to be this, and that would be the square root of our variance. And the interpretation of that makes a little bit more sense. That would mean we would expect the value of whatever to be the average distance from the mean. Let's take a look at some scenarios where we might use expected value. All right, so we're at Tucson Raceway Park, and we have our horse, soon to be glue. A little dark humor there for you. Um, and it ha and our soon to be glue horse has a probability of one out of twenty coming in first place, probability of one tenth coming in second place, probability of one fourth coming in uh, third place. First place is going to pay 4500 to be the winner. Second place would uh, be 3500 to be paid out to the winner. Third place, 1500 And it actually costs us $1,000 um, to enter the race. So let's let x equal the winnings. Right? Or the amount made. Right? So we're going to make a probability model for this. I recommend always making a probability model before you try calculating the mean. And you're going to kind of see why. All right. If we come in first place, they're going to give us four thousand five hundred dollars, but we've already paid one thousand. So our actually our actual winnings for coming in first place are three thousand five hundred dollars, and the probability of that occurring tell they tell us is one twentieth. Awesome. Next, we could come in second place, and that pays us uh, thirty five hundred, but it costs us. A thousand to get in, so we would only be winning twenty five hundred, and the probability of that occurring is a one tenth chance of that happening. Okay. All right. Next thing that could happen is we could come in third place. Awesome, and we know that there's a one fourth chance of that happening. Cool. Are we done? So I could come in first, I could come in second, I could come in third. Oops, and in this case, forgot to subtract the 1,000. Don't forget to do that. So only, 500, win, only winning $500 if we come in third. Right, sorry about that. So only thing that could happen is I come in first, second, or third, right? No possibility of anything else happening. Well, let's take a look. When I add all of these up, I actually only get 8 out of 20. So that's not every possibility. I haven't added up to 100%. So this is another scenario. As much as we don't want to say it, I could actually lose. Or not come in first, second, or third. In which case I would lose my 1,000 entry fee. And there's a 12 and 20 chance of that happening. But look, these winnings are quite a lot. And while it's not super likely that those happens happen, they might happen, and, and 500 is pretty good too. Um, so let's see if it's actually worthwhile. Well, let's find out what do I expect to win if I enter this race on average. All right. So my earnings are going to be 45, not 4,500. Come on, Mr. White, sell you're better than this. 3,500 times 1 out of 20, plus 2,500 out of 
one tenth. When you see the key, you will see why I made a mistake there, because I am glancing at it just to make sure I've got everything right and to make things run more smoothly. There's a one fourth chance that I win 500. And there's a 12 in 20 or 3 out of 5 chance that I lose $1,000. Well, when I add all of those up, okay, when I calculate that all out, we find that my expected earnings, let me just double check and make sure, but I think I have this one down. You're all probably yelling at me like, Mr. Whitesell, we already found the answer. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay. Our expected value is negative 50 or negative $50. So is it worthwhile for us to enter this race? Well, if we ran this race many, many, many times, we would expect on average to lose $50 per race. Do we want to lose $50 per race? No. Therefore, it is not worthwhile. not a worthwhile venture. And this is really how businesses determine whether they will make investments or not. Okay. All right, for our next one, I want to do one more of these with you and then I'm going to let you look at the key for the remainder. You know what? It's 36 in minutes into this. Let's see if you can do the last two on your own. Check the key at the end to see if you got the right answer. All right? Hope you found this interesting. Hope you found this helpful. Have a wonderful day.